just a city who he thinks will win the title. Very interesting. Let us know what you think so we can put it to Robbie in an hour's time. Lovely. <laughs> Thanks very much, Mike. So what annoys you most when you're driving? How about being tailgated by other drivers or perhaps drivers hogging the middle lane on the motorway? Well, from today, there will be new penalties for the people responsible. Yes, under the new rules, police will be able to issue £100 fines and three points to careless drivers in England, Wales and Scotland. A little earlier, the Transport Minister, Stephen Hammond, told us that the fines have been set at the right level. What we're doing today is bring the fine levels up to reflect the severity and, I think, the seriousness of offences. And we'll bring them up to the level that is uh, uh, applicable to all other offences, similar offences. And so I think it's the right level to choose. Uh, and I'm convinced that it will be a deterrent for a number of people. OK, let's pick up on that point. So joining us now is Steve White from the Police Federation and motoring lawyer Damien Simmons. Um, Steve White, first of all, um, let's just uh, ask you that question. Do you think these fines will be a deterrent? Well, of course, deterrent is what it's all about. Um, and we're glad that during the consultation process that we contributed to, the government listened to what we said, which was the original levels that they were talking about was going to be far too low. Mm. I actually think it probably still could have gone higher. In fact, I've been speaking to people this morning who have said, you know, it's, n it's not going to act as a deterrent. But, of course, deterrent is two things. There's what happens when you get caught, but more importantly, it's the fear of getting caught. And one of the problems that we've got with this is that, yeah, that's fine, give us the tools, but we need the officers on the, on the streets to actually enforce it as well. And we're not convinced the Department of Transport is talking to the Home Office um, in order to, to join those two things up so that we've got the police officers on the streets in order to actually enforce the new, the new rules. Uh, Damon, you're a, a solicitor, and yes. you work specifically with traffic offences, don't you? So what do you see being the result of these changes? Well, the, except um, from the police perspective, it's very hard to enforce these issues. Again, they need to be uh, identified, and it may come down to the fact that these are going to go unnoticed. Um, but with respect to deterrence, I think a lot of people are more concerned about points on their license, because a, a clean license or your driver license in general is a good commodity. Uh, so I find that increasing the fines is still not going to necessarily be the main concern for the everyday driver. Um, especially if you've got a, a full-time driver who's got to do 30,000 miles a year, um, putting more offences that could give rise to fixed penalties, um, we're still going to, uh, that's going to be enough of a deterrent in itself. So you presumably the, the business you're in, which is, uh, is defending people who have been accused, how do you see that changing under this situation? For the t tailgating, for example, mm -hmm. that would require, presumably, for someone to be, to be uh, prosecuted, given one of those on-the-spot fines, a police officer is going to have to have witnessed it, possibly filmed it, uh, for there to be enough evidence to prosecute, otherwise someone's going to come to you and say, well, I just won't accept it, and they can, well, let's go to court. Um, I agree with that. Um, I believe that a lot of people will want to challenge these issues, and a lot of the time they do want to challenge things that they don't accept or they see as quite petty. Um, but in this instance, uh, if you, you see a lot of careless driving charges which, where people are being prosecuted just on one person's opinion. Quite often you'll have an accident with a he said, she said, or a police officer won't have his video rec uh, recording equipment on. So people will still want to deny it. Uh, even if they don't accept it, they may want to challenge it and have their day in court. So I, I don't think that we at Hammond Trotter solicitors are going to have an, a decline in work. I think we're still going to have people calling us about inquiries and want to go to court and still have to represent these people. Um, I mean, I'm still a little bit confused about whether you think it will be a deterrent or not because I mean, mm. they are talking about £100 fines and three points. So you think the three points is the deterrent rather than the fine? It, it should be the deterrent. But, but it will or won't be? I, I don't think it will be. I don't think driving habits will change through fear of prosecution. You only have to look at uh, mobile phone offences. The, the point system only came in a number of years ago. Um, but it's one of the biggest complaints on the road, people on the phone. Mm. Yeah, uh, Steve, I don't know if the figures exist. I mean, how we asked the Transport Minister earlier about success with mobile phone usage. You know, how many people are prosecuted? How many people are done for using their phones or texting whilst driving? Are anybody, is anybody being caught? I think the sad fact of the matter is that there's fewer people getting caught now than there used to be because um, three or four years ago there were 7,000 road policing officers in this country and you're now looking at probably around about 3,500. Now, Mr Hammond made the point that it's not just roads policing officers um, that enforce this legislation. Yeah, that's true. But when it comes to driving on a motorway where you get that kind of mobile phone usage uh, on a long motorway journey or in lane two of the motorway. You have to be on the motorway. Uh, and if you're going to be on the motorway, you have to be a roads policing officer because it's an extremely danger dangerous and challenging place to work. And so you can't just take 
a, a, you know, an officer from anywhere and put them on the motorway and expect them to be able to cope. So the, the government's got to understand that that's fine bringing in these rules and giving us the tools to do the job. But of course, the ultimate tool in, in us doing the job and in enforcing the legislation, which the public want us to do, you know, everybody gets incensed by bad driving on, on motorways and indeed bad driving anyway. The public are wanting us to do something about it and we need the officers on the streets to do it. Um, let's talk about evidence as well, Damien, because let's talk about, for example, something that really annoys people um, is hogging the middle lane mm. and this is now going to become an offence. Um, from your point of view as, as a solicitor, how difficult would it be for people to prove that's what happens? Well, I think it's a, it's a very tough test because there doesn't seem to be any guidance of how long is hogging, hogging mm. middle lane, you know, staying, it talks about being in the lane for a necessarily period, a long period of time, mm. but people, it could always be extenuating circumstances or an explanation for what happened, um, and I think it's going to be a very tough thing to argue when someone's accused of it, and I think it'd be just as straightforward to defend as many other things he said, she said, mm. I've got an explanation for that. Uh, we'll leave it there, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Oh, we've had lots of your comments as well. Thank you for those too. Oh, we're going to have a look at the weather now. Carol's there for us this morning. Morning.